Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? So you may have seen the video where I made a chessboard and if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link here. Um, and in that video, I took a shortcut by cutting the pieces to be perfectly square on the first pass. The problem with that is that if you cut them perfectly square and then glue them together, after that, I'm going to have to sand them on the top and bottom, and that's going to make them not square anymore because I'm going to reduce the, the height. One of the nice things about that video that I released is I received several orders from viewers asking me to make them custom chessboards. They're not exactly the same as the one that was in that video. This one is going to have two and a half inch squares and I'm gonna use these two pieces of wood. I've already planed and sanded them down a little bit. Uh, this one was three inches, this one was three inches, but the ash was badly cupped and the walnut was just a little bit more than three inches and that's too thick for my, for my table saw to cut. So I had to reduce it down a little bit. So let's get started. I'm starting by ripping the pieces that are gonna form the squares, but in this case, I'm cutting them to be rectangular in shape. Next, I'm orienting the grain so that they're all pointing in the same direction, and I'm marking them with an arrow so that I can keep track of the pieces. I'm also gonna mark two of the edges to run through the jointer so that they end up being perpendicular to one another, and then I'll mill the other two edges by running them through the planer. Okay, I have the pieces plain to size. So all of the interior pieces are two and a half inches wide, but they're a little bit taller. They're about two and five eighths inches. And if I flip this over, you can see that it's a little bit lower than the side pieces. But the pieces on the end are actually square, two and five eighths by two and five eighths. So if I rotate this, you can see it's the same height. And that's so that after I glue it up, I can trim the end pieces so that they are perfect squares. And now I'll do the first glue up, and clamp it up and let it sit overnight. I like to put a board across the middle and clamp it so that it applies vertical pressure to keep this flat. And now I'm gonna sand this down to the desired two and a half inch thickness. Normally I would use my crosscut sled to get a straight edge along the end of this board, but because these squares are so thick, my crosscut sled added to this thickness is too thick for my table saw blade to go through. So I'm gonna use my track saw. The issue with the track saw is that it's not able to cut that thick as well. So I'm gonna cut it part of the way through and then I'll flip it over and cut it again. This doesn't have to be a perfect cut because once I get it straight enough, I can run it through the table saw and clean it up. So now I'm cleaning up the edge and then I will cut it to the desired thickness. This chessboard is going to end up being one and a quarter inches thick. So I'm cutting these pieces to be one and three eighths inches so that I have an eighth of an inch that I can sand down once it's glued up. And now it's ready for the second glue up. 
again, I put a horizontal board across the top and I'll clamp it up and let it sit overnight. And now I'm gonna sand this down to the one and a quarter inch thickness. And now the final chessboard is thin enough that I can use my crosscut sled to trim the edges. And now I'm sanding down the walnut for the frame to be also one and a quarter inches thick. It was really cold that day, only about six degrees Fahrenheit, so I had the garage door open only long enough to get this board through the sander. The frame on this board is going to be two and a half inches wide, so I'm cutting this to be three inches because it's going to be inserted into the board with a tongue and grooved kind of a joint. So I'm numbering the pieces one through four so that I can keep track of them and attempt to have a continuous grain running around the board. I'm also adding an arrow to indicate which edge is going to be touching the chessboard. Now the client asked that I put banding around the outer edge of the frame, so I'm using my dado set to cut a groove, and then I will insert a strip of tiger maple into each of the pieces. I'm running the pieces of tiger maple through the drum sander and I will sneak up with a fit to make it as tight as possible without being too tight. Now that it's glued up, I will trim off the excess and create a whole bunch of expensive paint stir sticks. I've added a fresh piece of wood to my miter gauge and I've got my miter gauge set at a 45 degree angle and now I'm running the blade through the piece of wood and I'm going to use that kerf mark to line up all of my cuts for the miters. Next I'm going to cut the groove in the chessboard using the dado set. and I'll cut a matching tongue that's going to go into the edge of the frame. And now I'm just fine tuning the miter joints to make sure that I have a really good fit. The thing that's going to be unique about this chessboard is that I'm going to inlay the client's initials in the corner of the frame and I'm going to do that using copper. So I have this 21 gauge copper that I'm going to use for the inlay. And when I read some of the reviews on Amazon before I bought it, um, some of the people said that it was too hard to bend easily, and they were absolutely correct. It's, it seems pliable, but when I'm trying to go around a tight radius of a letter, then it really is too hard. Um, I have this 24 gauge copper that really is easy to bend, but it's a little bit too thin, in my opinion, for the visual appeal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anneal the copper and what that means is I'm just gonna heat it up to be red hot, let it cool, and that will soften it so that I can bend it easily. It only takes a few minutes for the copper to cool, but while it's cooling, I'm gonna trace out the letters onto the frame using carbon paper. 
I'm worried that some of these tight corners might break away when I'm inserting the copper or even carving out the, the grooves for the copper. So I'm gonna try and stabilize the wood using CA glue. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I think it's better than doing nothing. The copper is about 0.85 to 0.9 millimeters thick, and I have this router bit that's 0.75 millimeters thick. So it's, it's a very thin router bit, and just a little bit thinner than the copper that's going to be inserted to give it a nice tight fit. Since the router bit has a 1 8 inch shank and my router doesn't have a collet that's that small, I'm going to use my Dremel tool and I'm going to attach it to a router base for a Dremel. I have the Dremel tool set on a medium speed and I'm going to just proceed very carefully. The video right now is going at about two and a half times the normal speed. And now the video is going about five times the regular speed. It really wasn't that difficult to do this, I just had to be careful. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't proceed too fast, otherwise I would risk snapping off the tip of the router bit. I've done my best to shape the pieces of copper into the form of the letters. And now I'm going to just hammer it in. And I'm hammering this in with multiple light taps. This next groove was a little bit too tight, so I tried to open it up a little bit with my chisel. But as I feared, I broke out a piece of the wood. I set that piece aside so that I could glue it back in, but as luck would have it, I misplaced it. So I'll have to make another piece. After breaking off that first corner, I didn't want it to happen again, so I decided to insert a piece of copper into the slot while I was hammering in the other piece. That way it would provide some support for the wood to prevent it from breaking. I used a file to miter the corners where the pieces were joining to try to get a better fit. 
And now that all the copper is inserted, I will apply some CA glue around all of the edges to make sure that it's going to be locked in place. Now it's the next day and I'm just sanding the copper down to be flush with the surface of the frame. I'm sanding it with a 220 grit sandpaper and then I will come back and polish it at the end. I'm going to cut that missing piece um, just by eyeballing it. It's a little bit of a triangular piece that I'm going to cut. It was pretty easy to fit in and then I'm just going to use some epoxy to hold it in place. And now I'll apply some epoxy across the entire copper area to make sure that any gaps are filled. Because I have the tiger maple banding around the outside edge of the frame, I'm not going to use corner splines so I'm going to use biscuit joints instead. I know that biscuits themselves don't add a lot of strength, but they do increase the surface area of the glue, and that will add enough strength, I think, to hold everything together. Having the biscuits in place definitely made it harder to put the frame together, but they definitely helped to make sure that everything was properly aligned. And now I'm going to cut finger slots into two of the edges. And to minimize tear out, I like to run the router into each of the ends of the finger slot, and then I'll go back and cut the entire slot. And one of the last things I do before finishing is I rub the board down with water to raise the grain. I'll let that dry and then I'll sand it again. And I have a rotary sanding tool that attaches to the end of my Dremel tool and I'm using 2000 grit sandpaper to polish the copper. Now I'm wiping the board with denatured alcohol to remove any dust particles. The first coat of finish will be a de-waxed shellac. This helps to seal the grain and it penetrates deeply into the wood fibers. <laughs> 
going to use a polyurethane finish for this board because of its durability. I really like working with lacquer, but it's just not durable. If someone were to set a glass with a wet bottom on top of this chessboard, you would end up with a white ring. So I'm going to apply five coats of polyurethane with a gloss finish because of its clarity, and then I will follow that up with a final coat of a satin finish. I use this spray shelter because I'm finishing indoors and that keeps the finish from landing on all of my tools. And I've added this inline filter to the end of my spray hose to help prevent moisture from being introduced into my finish. I sanded in between each coat of polyurethane with 320 grit sandpaper. And now that all of the coats have been applied, I'm rubbing the board down with pumice stone mixed with paraffin oil. And then I will rub on a coat of paste wax using 4 aught steel wool. And this just adds a protective finish. So I gotta ask. Would you make it?